How's it going? Welcome back. It's Jonathan. Okay, in this video, I'm actually going to go through some of our forecasts uh, for the monthly forecast with WD again. I've been harping on about this for a little while now, telling you that there are places that you can go to get a glimpse into what may occur in the future. And today I wanted to go over these forecasts. At least I'm going to go over two of them, which is going to be the, uh, the Dow Jones one. And on top of the Dow Jones one, we're also going to take a look at the, uh, the Bitcoin one. Okay, so got the Dow Jones one right here which is just a bullish bias for the month. And then we got the Bitcoin one, which was to top out around the 8th, 9th of the month, and then fall for the rain remainder of the month. So we're going to start on Bitcoin because uh, that's what everyone's here for. I'm going to be showing you nothing in this video except for the directional bias and what actually occurred. Okay, so there's going to be no other forms of analysis. Everything else that we've talked about in the past is still playing out. So no other form of analysis at the moment except for the directional biases, okay? So we're going to head over to the chart and we've got the uh, the directional bias for Bitcoin up here for the month of January. And we're going to take a look at the directional bias as well as the turn dates. So the directional bias for Bitcoin was pretty clear. Uh, we either had we don't we didn't know exactly which bias is going to dominate. And that's why we have two of these lines on the chart because we it's January, right? It's the new year. We didn't exactly know which bias was in it, was going to um, be playing out for the remainder of the year. However, what we do know is that both of these biases point up to begin the year, and then sorry, up to begin the month, and then down for the remainder of the month. So at the moment, it looks like the green one might be providing uh, the bias for the beginning of the month. And then we have the black one taking over the second part of the month. Not exactly an ideal situation. However, it can be used as a guide, okay? So the market was to possibly uh, open up lower before shooting up higher with a top on this uh, anticipated around the 7th to the 8th. We'll go into the turn dates next. And then they were to possibly find a secondary top around the 11th before gliding lower. We had a potential top if the market was to push higher around the 14th, but then the directional bias was to remain down. Now we're currently heading into the 23rd, 24th. Okay, that's where we are right now. So from here, we could be looking for prices to rise for a few days, um, but the directional bias should definitely be remaining uh, either stagnant or down for the remainder of the month. So th this is for both of you in the back end and those of you who are considering coming into this or those of you who don't even know that this sort of analysis exists. Uh, this is how we want to be interpreting this, okay? So where would you be going now? We're well, not going to be uh, entering longs for the long term because we still have bi bi bias directional um, theorems pointing down, okay? So if we see this black line, it's still ending the month lower. And if we look at the green line, it's basically now going from the 17th to the 31st, basically flatlined. So that means that if price is going to rally, it's sort of just going to rally within this range here. Uh, that's the, the bias there, okay? So now we're going to go back here. We're going to take a look at the turn dates. And the directional bias that I had, by the way, was... Uh, so the trend for January appears to be pointing down again. We're not sure of the new effects of the world of the new world influences, and that was the ETF. Uh, my personal bias remains down after the ETF approval uh, for a few months. It is not uncommon for the market to reverse after long-term news has finally hit the market. Right now, I wouldn't be buying this market, not until we get some confirmation of what's happening. And basically, uh, we can see the effects of that. All these people who were suggesting that the market's going to go higher uh, we're wrong. And now they're telling us, now they're telling you that they're right in the essence that the market was actually going lower. Okay, you see that, right? Oh, we're flipped. Oh, the market's going lower. We told you it was going lower. We told you there's going to be a pre harvening sell-off. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so the way I do things is a little bit different. We just look at the pure cycles. We don't second guess. Um, we only second guess the cycle if the cycle isn't playing out. We try to find out why it's not playing out and see if there's another cycle that has uncovered itself or is trying to uncover itself that we haven't uh, caught on to. Now, the second part, um, this is of a series of parts that I give you, are the turn dates. And these are based on uh, the sun, okay? So this would be the monthly turn dates for Bitcoin based on the sun. So... First one we had was Friday the 5th. We know that already looking at the chart, 
Friday the 5th was a turn day in the essence that it came uh, up, ran down into the 5th before advancing. However, the actual um, low as per the cycle was on the 3rd. So when you go to combine your analysis, you want to combine both the curve and the turn dates for an area of confluence. Okay, so you'd be looking for a turn date basically between the 3rd to the 5th. That's sort of the line of thinking. But if you were to be watching for the 5th for a turn date, um, you could have seen that the market hit a low around this date and you'd be, you'd be looking up for the next turn date, okay? So we're going to stick a little rectangle just on here. The next one is the ninth. So this is when uh, I started to get cautious about the market because the market was running up into the ninth and the ETF launch was basically happening two days after that, okay? So it was probably not uncommon to see that this, because it was running up into this date, was going to be marking a top in the price action, okay? See that the market did top out, ran lower on, uh, I believe it was probably the SEC fake news event, and then the market ran up into its ultimate top on the ETF launch before reversing from then on out. Again, you don't wanna be buying into these dates, you wanna be judging price action after the dates. Next one is the 16th, so if we move around, go to the 16th, uh, 15th, 16th, we see that the market ran lower, then was pushing higher into the 16th, that is a no buy zone. Um, and then as we can see, the market fell away from the 16th. So we wanna again, be moving in and out of these dates. Next one is the 23rd. So the 23rd is here. Um, so the market was running lower into the 23rd. That means the 23rd could possibly be a, a buy date. In this instance, you see the market pushing lower into the date. And that means you wanna be looking for a potential reversal into this date, okay? As we can see, the market has reversed. Um, then we have the next date, which is on the 30th. Oh, battery's running low. So at the end of the month, we have another date. And if the market's going to push higher, then basically you do your price analysis from here on out. Uh, I won't do any price analysis here because it's uh, not the point of this video. But you do your high, low swings, etc. Try to get that price clustering lining up. Try to get your square of nine levels lining up. And then you put on your uh, basically rectangles where you think that market's going to turn on the date, okay? And if you're looking lower, then you, again, you'd put your turn date and you get a price and time confluence. Wait for that to play out. So that is the Bitcoin one, okay? So as we can see, we are pointing down into the end of the month. How do you get month two? Well, you do have to join our GAN monthly forecasting service. I'm going to be publishing month two uh, towards the end of the month. All right, so now we're going to close out of this. We're going to head over to Dow Jones. Alrighty, so what we have here is our directional bias for January. And we're also going to get up this one here. This is our directional bias for January for the Dow Jones. The, the market bias was bullish. We had a possible top Around the, ninth of, uh, around the 8th of the 9th. We had a low that we were looking for around possibly the 14th, the 15th, around this time frame. Looks like there's a weekend in there. And then the market should push up with some minor swings, and, uh, minor swings higher, lower and higher throughout the month. However, the directional bias should be bullish. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happened. We have the market pushing up. Uh, found again we got three lines here basically because we got three curves for the year and we're going to track this for the first couple of months just to see which curve is more dominant once we find the dominant curve and these curves will change throughout the year once we find the dominant curve we can then reduce some of our cycles to then watch it play out at the moment all three cycles are pointing higher so then our bullish bias because of that should also be higher and um, give or take any inversions that occur in the market for example this top here could be inverted lower. Anyway, I got some more things to show you. So we're now going to go to our, sorry, wrong one, turn dates here. So suggested turn date was the 4th, 8th, 15th, 20th, and 23rd, and then, sorry, 25th, and then finally the 28th. So we're gonna start off from the first one, which is the 24th. So the market is, whoops, sorry, the 4th, not the 24th. The market is moving down. It then swings higher into the fourth. 
marking a top. I don't know why I did that. Marking a top. Okay. Market swung higher into that date. This is this would be a no buy zone, as in like the market's pushing higher through this date because it made the bottom on the third, pushing higher into the fourth, no buy zone. We then trade in and around it to the next date, which is the eighth. The next date would then be a low. This would then be a no sell zone because the market is pushing lower into it. Okay, market's pushing lower. It opened up down here and then pushed higher for the day. The next one would be the 15th. Now we don't have the, the benefit here of a trading day on the 15th. The 15th was a closed day. However, the market was pushing higher into the Friday, marking the weekend where the 15th would be the Monday. So we'd either judge um, we'd either judge the Friday or the Monday for the price action to see what was happening here. So into the top here. The next one then after the 15th is the 20th. And the 20th also gave us a weekend here where we have the 19th to 22nd. So since the market topped out on the 22nd, this would be basically a no buy zone between Friday to Monday while we wait for the top to come in. 22nd mark the top, basically because our turn date was on a weekend. And the next one is now the 25th. So the market is moving down into the 23rd. If it moves down for two more days, then a, the 25th should be a low. If it starts to reverse, for example, tomorrow, then the 25th will be a high. Tomorrow, Aussie time, you might have two more days if you're in the US. So now we look at our curves if we want to forecast the future. Um, first of all, do your price analysis, et cetera, if we want to look at our curves to forecast the future. Then we have uh, two curves basically bottoming out here before moving higher. Uh, so this blue one is bottoming here before moving higher. This green one's bottoming here before moving higher. Then we have the red curve pushing higher here and the blue curve, curve pushing higher here. So that would probably, if we were looking at just the curves alone, provide us uh, a weak confluence for the green one and the blue one to push the market higher into the end of the month and possibly a medium confluence. I'm saying medium because uh, we could also be looking at a double top pattern here. We'll have to see it play out, just doing hypothesis on just this analysis alone, and um, with two curves coming into a turn date pointing higher. So we might get an end of month sell-off um, if this comes in. However, if the market finds a low on the 25th, we might get an end of month rally. We'll see how that plays out. Anyway, that is it. So if you want to basically know a directional bias just based on this, then this is the group to be in. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you anything else because the guys have um, duly paid for this research. So you know where to find it now. And that's all that I had for this video. Talk to you soon.